Ravens seem to have a really big problem with their running game, but how should they fix it? It couldn't hurt if the Ravens brought in Jamie Collins, could it? How concerning is it that the Ravens have such a high drop percentage? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. A series where you can ask me any question you want to and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Appreciate all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Shout out to y'all. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Um, thank you to everybody that's a member of Team Keep It Clean. Now, thank you for subscribing, leaving likes on the video, sharing your thoughts on whatever it is that we're talking about every single day, and always sharing your thoughts with respect. Appreciate y'all. We got some great questions to get into. Let's do it. First question came from my boy Nick Bricken. I appreciate you being a patron. He said, what a season it's been. Just wanted to ask a quick question. I went back and rewatched the game this week because I'm shamefully obsessed. After watching, I think we have a running back problem. Okay, I don't know if this is a good or a bad problem. He said, mainly with Latavius and Devontae. We talked about the offensive line run blocking, but from my view, the eye test, I haven't seen any data. I thought the blocking was fine, but the backs just lacked explosiveness and vision. Oof, that's scary. Uh, for example, on the third and three that they ran with Latavius and then Tucker missed the kick, if he had cut back, he would have been one-on-one -on -one with the corner, but instead he dove right into the backs of the linemen. This is the exact same cutback that Tyson made against the Raiders to score on a fourth and two. I really don't think we can rely on Murray or Freeman. As of right now, if either of them are in the game, I wouldn't want to run on third down, which is detrimental to Ravens' identity. How do you think they can rectify this if the running back situation is as bad as I believe it is? Personally, uh, I think Tyson needs at least 10 carries a game to start. Now, I, I think that at least Tyson Williams should be the starter and the main runner of the football of the Baltimore Ravens. Um, he is clearly uh, the best runner. Now, with you watching the game, um, with, with us as fans watching the game, it's tough because the running backs, we, we, we may see something and be like, oh, man, they should have cut the back, cut back this way. Oh, they should have went this way. But when you're actually out there on the field, it's a whole other story. Um, and we're looking at it from a different angle than from what they're looking at it. Uh, or from where they're looking at it from, I mean. Um, so it, it's, it's easier to say, not that they can't see everything. That, well, they, they see a lot differently than we see. Cause we see the broadcast view, or if you got the All-22, you can look at all these different views, but they see what's right there in front of them. Uh, so it can be sort of hard, harder to judge. But um, with all that being said, Tyson should be the number one runner, in my opinion. I think he should be the one getting – not all the carries, but getting most of the carries because he, again, he's all, he's shown throughout every game. He is the best runner. He's the most explosive runner. He got the big play potential. But with Tyson Williams, it sort of reminds me of uh, Devin Duvernay's situation because both of those two give, like Devin Duvernay at punt return, both of those two give you the best option for a big play. They they give you the best option for that big potential run or that big potential punt return. But the hands, they just got to work on keeping that ball safe. And then the sky will be the limit. So that would be my solution to the, the running back problem that you brought out would be to have Tyson. Not necessarily just get 10 carries a game because you, you, I, I don't feel like you can go into every game and be like, all right, you got to have at least 10 carries a game because then you'll be forcing a, a predetermined game plan. And every game plan is not the same. Um, but I just feel like he should be the main runner. Next question came from my guy Marco, and, and shout out to you for being a patron. I appreciate it. He said, Hey, Graven, I wanted to agree with you on your excitement on Bateman being on the active roster and Boykin playing in Denver, where I'm from, and actually will be there. I have tickets that I bought as soon as I knew they were coming to Denver. I can't wait for the game. I feel like the offense is going to go off, specifically Hollywood. What are you thinking? Do you think the same way? Now, real quick, just some clarification. Uh, Boykin and Bateman, they're not as of right now because I'm recording this on Friday, October 1st at 2.28 p.m. So as of right now, they're not on the active roster yet. They were only uh, activated from injury reserve, but not placed on the active roster yet. They have 21 days from the date that they were activated uh, from injury reserve. They have 21 days to be placed on the active roster. So it's not official that they'll be playing in Denver yet. Uh, by the time you see this video, we'll probably know by then. 
Uh, but so we'll see. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I definitely think it, it's going to open it up for Hollywood, and 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 just it'll open it up for Miles Boykin and Bateman too when they come back, because Sammy Watkins has done so much for this team in such a short amount of time. He has opened it up for Hollywood a lot, a lot. Hollywood been open a whole all year. He's been open all year. Um, so Sammy Watkins has brought a receiver that teams respect opposite Hollywood. So you bring on a Bateman, you bring on a Boykin and whatnot, and those guys, it, the, the potential for this offense to take another step forward and, and raise up another level, the potential is really high for that. Next question came from my guy Jonathan D. He said, Hey, Graven, I'm back again after my last breakdown on Alejandro from the Oakland game. I've been watching that offensive line like crazy in the upcoming matchups that they have on schedule. I must say our offensive line did a great job against the Chiefs. I projected our offensive line to dominate the Lions game, which they gave up some sacks, hurry throws, etc. However, I couldn't help uh, but to see that someone from our offensive line caught my attention in the Lions game, which I'm not sure people saw, but it was Kevin Zeitler. He was not too good, and it gave me some concerns. I know our offensive line is banged up, and there are a lot of shuffling going on and lack of chemistry, but we signed Zeitler to be that anchor at the right guard spot. Do you think we need to address the right guard position or maybe try Ben Cleveland? He's getting overpowered and dominated by a lot of unknown <laughs> defensive linemen. Here are some examples I broke down in the Lions game, and maybe everyone can see what I see. In the first quarter... Uh, at the 9-12 mark on first and 10, Zeitler got beat off the line, but it was a great job by Lamar with a quick throw and a quick completion. Second quarter with four, at the 14-59 mark, Zeitler gets beat again. However, Lamar escapes but got only two yards and tackled by the same defensive lineman who beat uh, Zeitler. Fourth quarter with a minute and four. At the minute and four mark on first and 10, Zeitler got beat. Lamar gets sacked. At the 45 second mark, second and 13, Zeitler gets beat bad. Forced Lamar to throw quick to Duvernay, which was incomplete. 35 seconds left, uh, third and 13, Zeitler gets beat again, but Lamar ducked in time to get out of that. Now, fourth quarter is where I saw the issue, which made me think, hmm, was Zeitler looking like this the whole game? Was he worth the signing? With these timestamps in quarter, maybe you can look at it and see if maybe I'm overreacting because of one game. Again, there's a lot of football left and a lot more games. I just feel like our championship window is now, and I'd rather we fix the issues now than later. Thank you again for your great content. No, we thank you for doing all this research. Um... Kevin Zeitler, I, I did hear from somebody that the Lions game, it was, it was a big yikes from Kevin Zeitler. Um, but the only thing that you can do right now is hope that he gets better. He's not going to be benched at all. Um, it, it would take literally everything, everything going wrong for a long time for him to be benched. Because he got paid the big money. So I wouldn't count on it. Uh, we just got to hope that the, the whole offensive line just gets better and, and jails and, and improves because yeah like you said it has been a, a lot of shuffling going on uh guys playing different positions and whatnot and then when ronnie stanley comes back alejandro he'll probably go to the bench he'll probably go to the bench and i, and I think it'll be because patrick mccarty so far so good man so far so good like i was that's one thing i was scared about man with, with patrick mccarty i was like Ooh, patrick mccarty right tackle he's so he's small his arms are short i, I ain't really too confident with that but he's been doing good you've been a pleasant surprise so um it's just th th this is a another year having a makeshift offensive line but yeah if they're gonna get to where they want to go yeah everybody gonna have to be that much better especially uh with everybody that they have that's out Next question came from BB. He said, what's up, fam? Hope all is well with you and the family. Also, I want to say thanks for the positivity. I uh, appreciate it. This channel helps in a lot of ways. I want to talk about Hollywood for a minute. I don't think people realize Hollywood has never been completely healthy in his career in the NFL. The Ravens drafted and injured Hollywood in 2019. As we saw, he even started the first game in 2019 against the Miami Dolphins, in which he set an NFL record that game. Throughout his career, uh, he has been the number one receiver for a run-heavy offense. He has been the most productive wide receiver for the Ravens. This past week against the Lions, I saw more people talking trash about this dominant big game player. Uh, everybody has a bad game, but for these Ravens fans, I think they need to reevaluate their banter about Hollywood. This team will be lost without him catching the ball. I bet his bounce-back game against the Broncos is going to quiet all of this nonsense. Thanks again. <laughs> Hashtag team keep it clean slash positive. Yeah, man, and it is what it is. People get caught up in a moment. Uh, and if, if you do, you could, you could do so much good. You can do so much good. But a lot of people, as soon as you do something bad, that's the only thing they're going to remember. Next question came from my guy, uh, Marcus. He said, what's up, Engraven? How do you feel about changing Le'Veon Bell's position to wide receiver? He is six foot one, runs great routes, and I think he'll be a pretty good slot receiver for Lamar. No. Change his position for what? If you want to put him at wide receiver, just have him go out there. 
Set, set him out there in the slot. That's fine. You ain't got to change your position just for him to catch a couple of passes. That that would be it. Wouldn't be no point. But um, you can still have him as a running back doing the running back stuff and then put him out at wide receiver too. Steelers did it. Oh, he said his next question was, and do you think we should try to uh, get Jamie Collins? You can never have enough pass rushes. Thank you, man, for the great Ravens content. Appreciate it, Marcus. Uh, Jamie Collins, it couldn't hurt. It couldn't hurt. I heard some stuff about him in the locker room. I don't know how true it is or not. But, you know, I mean, with, with Ravens locker room, you know they got a good vibe. You don't want to mess up a good vibe. But at the same time, with, with Jamie Collins, could he mess it up? If the rumors are true, who knows? But... I'm sure he would be just fine. And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, look at what about Earl Thomas? Um, again, with Earl Thomas, again, I, I honestly still do not think Earl Thomas was even, I don't think it was as bad as they tried to make it out to be. I just really think they wanted every reason possible to try to get uh, a legitimate conduct detrimental just so they could cut him because they regretted him paying all that money. I, 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 just, I, I really think all them stories that just started coming out out of nowhere, I think that was just the Ravens trying to get that money back. <laughs> so Jamie Collins, it, it couldn't hurt me. Next question came from my boy Flirt Nowinski. He said, so you know what time it is. How are you and yours? Hope everybody's doing good on your side. Oh, yeah, we good over here, man. He said, uh, I seen they activated Boykin and Bateman, which is huge. But my question is, why is Boykin still on the roster? Hold, hold up now, man. He said, I'm a big Boykin fan, but I figured they would have moved on. Uh, my theory is they have something brewing up for him. What do you think? Mm, okay, all right. So I, I thought this was going in a different direction at first. Uh, but with, with Boykin, yeah, I, I thought that um, there was a chance that he might get stashed, as y'all know. Uh, but I, I do love the fact that they are not giving up on him right now. And they're going to give him an opportunity to show what he can do now with these wide receiver coaches that they invested in. So I'm happy about that, and I'm excited about that, and, and I hope that it ends up working out for Boykin. He said, I know you hate the tight end theory, LOL, but that's the thing, uh, especially after they seen Waller cook him the way he did, LOL. But it's that aspect, and another one I was thinking about that would really be the game-changing monster that Hobbs was talking about, so here it is. I know it's early, but I've seen Hollywood blocking on run plays, also seen Duvernay looking like a fullback out there. Now you add Miles Boykin, and, and that is looking crazy. I can see them going in spread packages strictly for runs. You have Bateman on the outside running a fly or something. Duvernay in motion, basically like a puller. Have Miles on the outside blocking and Hollywood giving a chip. Uh, them alone, it could be dangerous. We didn't even get to pulling guards and stuff like that. Uh, and not only uh, that they are viable pass catchers, like this could be a crazy thing. What do you think? Yeah, he certainly adds a ton, a ton of value in the blocking game. We already know that Miles Boykin, the best blocking wide receiver that the Ravens got. And you know they want to run the ball more than they have been a bit. Uh, so he will help that out a lot. Um, and, and like my guy was saying earlier, he was saying with Latavius Murray and Devontae Freeman, they like running straight into blocks. But with Tyson Williams, he'd be bouncing to the outside. He'll make that cut and then just hit it. Uh, so those big runs that Tyson Williams be, been getting, they could be even bigger with Boykin out there. Next question came from Manuel. He said, what's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. I was watching a wide episode on Detroit, and from what I've seen uh, in the media of the Ravens players, especially from Humphreys, Victory IGs, is that the team loves Lamar. I mean, they better. Like, he, yeah, they better. But anyway, he said, but you will say they already do that. But hear me out. Okay, so, yeah, he, he, I guess you know me. Um, the team wants to badly win the Super Bowl for Lamar to help him shut down those nasty narratives about him. They want him to be great in his way, like some are saying about him after he beat Mahomes. But for them, it's not enough. They see that he puts more work than them, and it was on display for us when Humphrey showed Lamar uh, in Soldier Wood studying the film before takeoff. What are your thoughts? Yeah, it is where I, I can't say he puts in more work than other people on the team. I don't know how much work any of them are putting in. None of us know because we only see what's shown to us. But, yeah, of course, they're, they're all teammates, so they, they want to win for each other, not just for Lamar, but they want to win for each other. And they want to win for themselves, too. Like, they, they want their own Super Bowls. But he said, now on to a different question. With us getting Bateman and Boykin back and the team starting to get healthy, net, well, you need to put healthy in quotation marks. How much better do you think this team can get? On both sides of the field, because in special teams, well, the goal is still kicking and establishing records, and we are great in that area of the game. Um, so they, they, I, I said it before that I believe they have the potential to be great. They do, um, because they've, they just gotta clean up some stuff. That's it. They gotta clean up some small stuff, and this team got a lot of potential. And y'all know I ain't no homer. I ain't drinking a bunch of purple cool. No, y'all. So y'all know that. So this is like this is real. Uh, I do feel like they, they have the potential to be great. 
Um, defense, they got to clean up the tackling. For sure, they got to clean up the tackling. Uh, offense, the turnovers got to stop, and the offensive line got to block. That's it. That's it. And and they need to let Tyson Williams be the guy, and and then they'll they'll be in much better shape. And the last question on this episode, NFL question from subscribers came from my boy Nicholas. He said, "How concerning is it to you that the Ravens have yet again the highest drop percentage? Eleven point eight percent this season so far, three percent more." Than the next closest team. Now, I remember last year uh, when uh, a statistic came out about the Ravens and their drop percentage, and it was being it was very high. And my initial reaction, and, and I spoke on it too. I was thinking like, uh, yeah, it is high, but at the same time, those numbers are going to be higher because Ravens don't pass the ball as much as other teams do, and that's true. So the, the, with the law of averages, the number would be a lot higher because if you pass the ball a lot more than other teams and you have a drop percent, it's going to be it's going to be lower. But anyway, but somebody brought to my attention a very, very, very good point uh, with that to, to counter what I was saying. And they like changed my thinking on it completely because what they said makes sense. What they said was, well, yeah, the, the, the percentage is higher, but. It means it is that much worse for the Ravens because it's higher because they don't throw the ball as much as these other teams do. So what they meant when they said that was that the impact of the drops, it weighs heavier than it does on other teams who pass the ball a lot more. Because with the Ravens passing the ball less, that drop, those drops hurt the efficiency that much more. Those drops hurt that much more because the Ravens, they don't pass the ball nearly as much as these other teams do. So those drops weigh much heavier on our hearts uh, than it would for another team who passes a lot more. So it's um it's concerning. It's concerning. Um, but again, this is a part of needing to just clean it up. This is one of the things that we talked about. They need to clean it up. When they clean it up, things will be so much better. They, they will be so much better. And the, again, if they want to achieve being great... You gotta take care of the small stuff first, cause that's where it starts.